All right. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I think I'm alive. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Beth. If you're here, um, let me know you're here. All right. My name is Mary Beth, and I am the founder of the group Parenting through mentorship here on Facebook and um, Instagram. All right, how are you all doing today? It's a beautiful Thursday afternoon here in the capital city of Nigeria, Abuja, and I am super excited to be having this session. All right, so we do this every Thursday. We call it the PTM Hangout. All right, it is a session where we come. Hi, Becky, it's good to have you. All right, so it's a session where we come and we talk about, we pick a very, we pick issues, right, around parenting. We pick subjects around parenting and we discuss it and give parents the opportunity to ask questions around that subject all right so um we have this every thursday at 2 p.m all right so you want to mark that in your calendar and um take your break at that time if you're at work so we can do this we try to make it as short as possible between 30 minutes and one hour so we can just come in here have a conversation and everyone can run back to work all right beautiful so today we said we're going to be talking about um going back to school i mean all around the world children are graduating in fact a lot of children are back in school already all around the world right good so those who are going in late are going in some people went in this week and some of the kids will go in next week you know but most schools are already in school or most people are already in school my kids go back to school or my son goes back to school next week right good so i just thought this would be a good topic to talk about at this point mm -hmm. when our children are going to school because i know i mean if you are like me you have your skepticism right if you're like me you should have your concerns right with covid hi jennifer right so with covid and all that we've been through in the last six months these children have been at home for six whole months okay and um, we know that it's not a safe things or uh, like great out there already right we know that um there's still there's still cases of infections and all of that and so we're a bit skeptical about sending them back to school but alas you know we're hoping that um things i mean will get better right and we need to go back to our normal life so i guess that's why it's important that the children go back to school and have some level of um, normalcy right so if you can hear me please let me know that you can hear me loud and clear i am using the gen and it's a bit um noisy not as quiet as it should be because the, we had a power cut earlier on earlier on all right so if you can hear me just let me know you can hear me loud and clear so i can continue all right so i thought we should talk about going back to school and if you follow me on facebook okay if you've been following my post you must have heard me mention something or say something like back to school is not just about getting the uniforms um lunchbox shoes uh, books and all of that it's um it's a it's more than that really it's actually more than that and you know because um over the years what we what we've done or what we have known as parents is when we talk about going back to school okay i can hear you thank you for the feedback jennifer all right so when we talk about going back to school okay over the years what we think about the moment we talk going back to school what we think of is ah Ah, school fees very important <laughs> very important right good so what we think about thank you i can hear you thank you becky all right so what we think of a lot of times is um um school fees and then these other things that i mentioned earlier and i said it's more than that and it's that more that i'm going to concentrate on talking about because i know a, a lot of us 
you know by now would have dusted these other things because we all know that these things are important not to make it sound like they are not important they are very very important it's important that your children go to school looking sharp it's important that they go to school with all that they need i mean all the accessories and gadgets and all that they need okay to have an easy school year all of that is important okay but these other aspects that we're going to be talking about today are also very very important okay last week i put together a back to school pack that's what i called it okay i put together a back to school pack like back to school tips for intentional parents i put that together and i have shared it with a few of my um, of the people in my in my close support group okay people who have taken my courses you know and uh, have people you know in my close support group let me leave it there all right so i've shared that with some of them and uh, i mean they have been they've been like it's been really really helpful okay so i shared 10 tips in that pack okay so we'll be talking about some of the tips in that pack today of course this is talking so we will be explaining and elaborate i mean making elaborate explanation okay but around those tips that we have shared in the pack all right so and that pack we'll talk about the pack at the end of the day how you can access that um pack or that parenting tip for intentional parents right um back to school tip for intentional parents we'll talk about how you can access it at the end of this session so the first thing we'll be looking at right today is um the first thing we'll be looking at is uh, when we talk about how you can support your children for this school year, how you can prepare your children to excel in this school year. That's what I'm concerned about, how you can prepare them to, um, to excel in this school year beyond just what they need to take to be comfortable in school. How can we support them? It's a new school year, meaning they are going to a new class, meaning they, are, I mean, they must have been they must have been promoted to the next level so it is a new milestone altogether for the kids in kindergarten they'll probably be going to year one at this point the ones in that have just finished year six will probably be going to jss one okay they'll be going to high school at this point now how can we ensure that beyond the way they look and what they take to school that we are supporting them enough to excel in this new milestone now the first thing I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about five of them now the first thing I'm going to talk about is that you need to be sure that your child is healthy and ready for school okay health is wealth health is everything you need to be in the right state in your health before you can actually achieve anything so whether your child is going to boarding school or the child is in a day school it is important that the child's health is in the right place okay so i said today that i would be sharing with you not from what i have googled or what i have um read anywhere i'm going to be sharing my experience and what i have done in the last 10 years of my life and it's worked for me over and over again all right so the first thing is you want to make sure that they are in the right place health wise so what i do at the beginning of the school year what i do just before we return to school is i take them in for a checkup okay so i'll take them in to see a doctor at this point we don't necessarily have to see a specialist it's okay we just see a general practitioner at this point because it's not a see if we're ill most of the time it's just simply routine check that we want to do we just want to be sure that the children are in a good state to return to school they're in a good state not to go back to school to um go back to school to infect i mean infest other people with whatever i mean if they have some sort of a, a viral infection be it a common cold or whatever so we try to do all of that and then with covid 19 it is even more important that we do these things that we ensure that our children are in the right place their immunity is top notch okay why they are going back to school so we will go in and we'll see a general practitioner and um we would do most often what they do is routine tests right for some people they don't they would they don't necessarily need to see you know a doctor for them to do this but i try to do that so we just see a general practitioner usually it's not too much money to see those i mean 
a general practitioner so we do that and most times the kind of course, um, tests that they run will be um, full blood counts or malaria you know they check their truth and all of that so from the full blood counts of course they can tell if there's an infection somewhere there bacteria viral or whatever so as soon as we're done with that before school resumes a week or two okay in this this time we started just uh, we of course we've been on multivitamins and um zinc and all of that you know because of the infect covid and all of that so we've been on that so we didn't have to start any new routine for you know multivitamins and all of that so usually even if we had stepped down on it or we're not taking any by the time it's two weeks before school we start taking multivitamins and um yeah vitamin c we raise the dose a little higher we take that you know and then the children drink a lot of water we ensure they drink a lot they have a lot of fruits and vegetables but what you're trying to do you're trying to boost their immunity because we all know that when the children go to school they are more exposed and they are likely to come down with infections more when they are in school than when they are home with us all right so that's the first thing you want to do very very important even more important for your children who go to boarding school right even more important for your children who go to body school so you want to do all these routine checks and be sure that the child is well okay you want to do all the boosting so you're sure that when the child is going in the child is going with his immunity you know boosted basically all right so that's the first thing all right now the other thing you want to do okay the other thing that we have always done is to ensure that you show up in school on the first day okay as a teacher i have seen i mean in my days in the classroom i have seen how uh, uh, many parents just take this first day of school for granted mm -hmm. so sometimes they don't even bring the children in on the first day of school some of them don't come in till say the third day the fourth day of school because in i mean in their head there is no need to go on the first day nothing happens on the first day yes in many schools nothing happens on the first day but in some other schools in my children's school something happens on the first day that's the truth but for some other school nothing or not much happens on on the first day you would think as a parent but the first day of school is very important that is the day that the child miss his class teacher right for the first time you meet the teacher while the teacher is still fresh and excited to have you that is the day that you get the best of your class teacher right that's the day that you get the best of the teacher and that is the best day to connect we take connections for granted but connections very important connections is very important when we connect with people we find out that we struggle less with our relationship with those people and there's something about meeting people on their best days every teacher is he's our best on the first day of school because the teacher is refreshed i mean after the holiday the teacher is refreshed it's the first day of school the teacher is excited about meeting the new set of students the teacher wants to put an impression out there on the first day so the teacher is usually at his or her best on the first day of school and you want to meet them on that day you want to meet them on that day you want to be one of those that you want your child to be one of those that meet the teacher on the first day because he helps the connection that they will establish and that connect that the connection that they will establish okay that will be relevant for the rest of the school year so first day of school is very very important i know you know i know how for me i have connected with some children on the first day of school and that connection actually i mean it doesn't matter what teachers say to you like they don't have favorites and favorites and all of that there is something about some kids you will find that you just click it's the same thing with friendship it's the same thing with when you get married into a family you find that some members you just con you connect with some members of the family more than you connect with others if you trace back it's probably the people that you met and you knew first in that family the people who were warmest to you the first time you had an encounter with them okay most times it actually traces back to our first encounter okay so that's why i said because the teacher is at her best on the first day of school it is important that you allow your child the opportunity 
opportunity to get that fresh first time first day happy best teacher connection it is important you won't know how important but psychologically it goes a long way it goes a long way and the child learns better when there is connection the child learns better the child is more relaxed when there is connection there's that other one too with their friends okay they go in there's a new person in school or their old friends i mean some of their friends are gone some are in and all of that you know but on the first day they are able to connect so by the time this other child is coming on the third day or the fourth day okay there is a there's a connection already in the classroom and the child doesn't exactly fit in easily when he comes okay we may not take cognizance of these things but these things are important the child feels like the outside that is coming to join because at that time there's been some extra you know some friendship relationship connection has been established okay and sometimes these drags for like drags many days and many weeks into the term into the term right or the semester before the child really gets to that point but some of them don't even ever really connect and in the classroom in the classroom connection is very important your connection with your teacher your connection with other people in the classroom it's all very important and these things play a role in i mean in the in, in the general outcome of what that child will obtain or what the child will get in the classroom so very key the first day and for you the parents the first day is very important when you go with your children to school for the first day what you're saying to your child is you are so important to me that on this first day of school when you're starting a new milestone in your life i want to be there with you I want to be there with you when you meet the stranger that has become your teacher. I want to be there with you when you get into a new classroom that has become your new home room. Okay? So what you're saying to the child, yes, the child may not say to you, this is what I get. But these things are small things, okay, that we deposit, okay? These are the things that we deposit little by little, little by little, and they add up in the end to form our relationship with our children, whether or not they say it. Okay? So when you show up with your child on the first day, you are saying to the child, you are so important, I am ready to leave everything and be with you on your first first day where you are i mean where you are starting a new phase in your life so very important you want to be there with your child on the first day of school and even if you are not there even if both of you cannot be there okay one of you it's important that one of the parents is there on that day preferably the parent who is more involved in the child's education okay I mean, both of them, it's okay. In fact, it's a good thing that, let's say it's daddy that is hardly involved, I mean, had, around, okay? It's important that daddy shows up on that day. I mean, you will, the message is huge, daddy. When you show up on that first day, the message is actually huge. Like, okay, I am here with you to start on or take on this new phase of your life. So make plans, yeah? So make plans to show up. In school make plan to show up with your child in school on the first day of school all right great now the next thing is structure oh my god if you have been around or following me in the last one month you will know that I have been talking about structure structure I think there is hardly anything that I have talked about in the last month or more than probably in the last four to six weeks that has not that has not included structures or that has not said something about structures because because the need for structures in our homes the need for structures in our parenting cannot be overemphasized it doesn't matter what you know or what you do or what you assume as a parent it doesn't matter the knowledge that you have gathered as a parent it doesn't matter how much you read or it doesn't matter how many i mean how many experiences you have if you do not create the structures in your home that can allow you step down these things that can allow you implement these things 
it all comes down to nothing that's the truth it all comes down to nothing if you don't have the structures in place so the need for structures in our homes cannot be overemphasized and when it comes to your child's success okay when it comes to your child's success in school when it comes to your child doing well or having a good year i mean a successful year academically okay or having a successful year of education it is important that you have the right structures in place so at the time the child is going to school there should be some sort of structure already by the time the child is resuming school on the first day, there should be a routine. What are the routines for the morning? If you want your children to be independent, if you want your children to own their learning and own their education and own their lives, okay, you want them to take responsibility early in life, then you need to put structures in place. Parents, we prepare our children for failure. When we wake up and everything depends on us. When we wake up in the morning as mothers, you, I mean, I mean, mothers, you can relate to this. How the morning is that time where there is a lot of shouting around the house. Have you had your bath? Then you shout at the house help. How come she has not dressed up? Is the food ready? You are doing all of this because you don't have structures in place. When you have structures in place, right everybody knows what is expected everybody is i mean a, a task is a, a, a portioned or assigned to each person everybody knows the time that what is supposed to be available so we know all of this and when they all know all of this you find out yes at the beginning it may be a bit you know a bit uh, um, rusty right at the beginning because they probably don't have the hang of it but what you do at the beginning is you put the structures in place and you begin to teach them and i mean you would have taught them first before you know school begins you know and then you begin to practice them together you practice them together one week two weeks you will find out by the time you get to the second at the end of the first week some things would be, i mean some things would have registered with each passing day more and more things things will register and before you know it after a period your children are able to run their show on their own everyone is able to get on to their task or to their responsibility and there is no need for you shouting and yelling everywhere because you want to keep micromanaging your home if you want to stop micromanaging if you want it i mean you want a case where the children can do things without you being there or without you shouting then you need to create structures in your home i was reading a text in a post somewhere okay um when I was, yes where someone was talking about um, not yelling and i read a com comment from a mother and she actually said that is not possible in i mean an african woman a nigerian mother must shout no an african woman doesn't necessarily have to shout not every african woman shouts not every nigerian parent shouts because when you put structures what you're doing is you are eliminating the shouting or at least you are reducing the shouting while you progress it will come there will probably be no need for that shouting provided you're working on it and the way you get this or your way you get to this point is by the structures that you create in your home so the structures are what first you have a routine so you have the routine for the morning what well, when are the children supposed to wake up if you don't you don't have to put um you don't have to put to uh, one o'clock um six o'clock to six fifteen and all anything you can create your schedules in blocks so you know that from six to six thirty they would have woken up they would have made their bed and they would have had their bath so you know it as soon as they wake up you're like we got 30 minutes okay we got 30 minutes to make that bed you know make that bed have your bath brush your teeth and be out for for devotion or something okay so when everybody knows this when everybody knows this so in the early times you're reminding them nicely calmly and sweetly or oh, how sweetie you're up okay we got 30 minutes you need to get right to it and all of that you go to whatever else you're doing whether you're going to the kitchen or you're doing and then you come in are you are you are you are you i mean are you on point are you on point and all that you are not yelling 
you're just prompting you're guiding you're supporting you're helping them build stamina all right so you finish that block 30 minutes the next block of 30 minutes is devotion breakfast and probably an affirmation okay that i mean I'm, i told you i'm talking my experience i'm talking about my experience right so the next block of 30 minutes is breakfast a devotion or i mean prayer morning prayer that you want to keep brief because it's the morning and you don't want it to be a but you don't you don't want it to be a task right okay you want you want to teach children to to pray but we don't want to keep those long devotions in the mornings right so you do that and then affirmation very important your children affirm themselves right i mean they affirm themselves uh, my name is kamsi again i am i'm a child of god i am enough you know all of that okay my son's diary is not here i would have read this affirmation to you but basically you do the affirmation affirmation and the children know that seven o'clock is the time where their bags are ready and they are sitting and waiting to go with daddy so they know that so what you have done you eliminate daddy coming out and nobody's ready you eliminate you eliminate the shouting and the yelling you eliminate the bickering on whoever it is that supports you in your home and all that you know so you eliminate all of that so you find that the children go to school with the right energy right they go to school with the right energy you are fine yourself everybody is okay they are not leaving and going to school angry you are not angry you don't have that look on your face like just go i'm tired of you guys like just go away you know everybody's happy because they need the right energy to go in and put in their best or to put i mean come in with the right mind for learning to happen so by the time you upset them or they upset you and everybody's angry some of them in fact sometimes you yell so much or you end up slapping someone and the child is crying on his way to school all of this ends up affecting the output it ends up affecting the child's performance in school that day and these things you think are small but that's it it's the bricks upon which the success of your child for that school year is being built it's the tiny bricks one by one we keep placing them placing them eventually they become the outcome of your child all that yelling in the morning and all that the child is going to school instead of having sweetness and calmness inside of him his brain all fresh ready for learning all that is in his head is your voice the yelling and how the nasty things you probably said and the, the punishment that is waiting for him when he comes back so how will he put his and for how will he learn in school all right so you want to get that out of the way so you have morning routines now they go to school by the time they are coming back from school there is your evening routine that is in place so they know when they come in they know that the first thing you do is take your bag and put it in a particular location not the one that your children come in they dump their bag in the class and they run in then the house help will now go and pack the bags and then bring them in no 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 put your routines in a way that your children are responsible parents it is our responsibilities to make our children responsible if you are not making your child responsible for himself you are sure changing that side you that child you are your child's number one enemy if you are not teaching the child to be responsible all right so let him grab his bag it is part of the routine grab your bag part of the routine where to keep your bag so by the time the child comes in on the first day i mean he's not been in school for six months so even if you have gone through this routine the first day you will likely drop the bag ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, not the right place not the right place so he goes back and he grabs it not come on will you go back mm -mm. not the right place not the right place he goes back up oh, mm, excuse me did you just forget something and then he told oh, okay mommy well, my bag and he grabs it and then he goes to put it in the right place your routine says afterwards i mean this is post covid so afterwards you come in you grab your bag you drop it you take off your clothes immediately and have a bath if your routine says before you come into the house there's a sanitizer at the entrance use it before you, whatever it is basically 
let it be known let the children know it practice these things go through them so that it is internalized so they come in i mean the routine says you have your bath afterwards after that you eat lunch and then after that you have a 30 minutes of rest where you do nothing no tv no nothing you just go lie down and rest your head right and then whatever else you have in your routine do you have a do you have homework? Do you have a practice of a life skill? Do you, I mean, sorry, of a skill? I mean, whatever it is that you have afterwards. But just have a routine. Have your structure in place, basically. And then when night comes, what are your nights, your evening routines? Okay, when do, do the children know when they're supposed to stop? Do the children know when they're supposed to have their bath? I'm um, sorry, when they're supposed to have dinner? Do they know, I mean, do you have in your routine that they help out in the kitchen? Even if it's for five or ten minutes, let them come in there and help. Let them know that it is part of your family. It is part of, I mean, family responsibility to be of help when you do that you're helping them build stamina to understand that this food that you eat has to be prepared and someday you would have to prepare it okay or someday yes yeah, someday you will have to prepare it i mean for those who never cooked covid came and you had you you didn't have a choice and you had to cook or something like that okay so it cooking is a life skill you want to teach it to your children and you want to introduce it in small bites right from when they are young so let your three-year-old go in there and scoop the cup of water and hand let your three-year-old pass the the, the 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 canister of salt let your three-year-old peel the bullion cube you know let them do something let them know that they are a part of what is going on in the home okay let these things be in your routine it depends on what it is that you want but basically i'm just giving you suggestions isn't it as i said i am talking about my experience today no paper <laughs> right so basically you do all of that so you know so the evening winds down like that when are they supposed to go to bed what are they supposed to do are they supposed to have bedtime stories and do you have um do you have a, a daddy or mommy time with them five minutes ten minutes whatever it is let it be spelled out let the children know it you know it and practice these things every day consistency is very key consistency is very key that is how habit is engraved that is how habits are engraved when you are consistent with them so basically so you do that right so you do that and you know that's it for your routine now the other thing the other thing you want to create i'm very big on this one is you want to create um yeah you want to create an academic plan or an education plan in your home you want to create an education plan in your own in your home outside whatever your children do in school okay remember we're talking about your child being successful or excelling this school year so it depends on what it is that is your goal okay it depends on the goal that you have for your children right it depends on the goal you have for your children so for me right education is big i mean education i mean yes education is big for me and for for us as a family and for us education is much more than that academic thing that happens in the classroom it is much more than that for me for us as a family so basically we have our own educational plan that is that goes side by side with whatever it is that the children do in school because i have always had this educational plan right because i've always had this educational plan it was very easy for me right to transit from my i mean to, to when i decided to homeschool my daughter it was very easy for me to gravitate or to go into homeschooling because i have always partially homeschooled my children because i always we always had our own education plan for our children we had our own goals for our children so it was easy because our goals okay were in place it was easy I, I could i could relate okay or a lot about homeschooling resonated because i was already on that path 
because homeschooling is really intentional parenting all right so basically whether you're homeschooling or you're not homeschooling you are a parent and you're your child's number one teacher so create your own educational plan for your children what do you want to see in your children what is the goal of the education that you're giving your children what are you trying to achieve where do you want to see your children 10 20 15 30 years from now what adult are you nurturing what kind of adult do you want to nurture when you have that vision that picture in your head you are able to create a goal the goal is like the vehicle that will help you achieve that thing so it's it's not possible that the only thing you want to do is to when they say what's your goal for your children it's not possible that i just want him to be an engineer that is the head of his department that can't be the goal that you have for your children there's going to be much more than that so it cannot be that your children knowing math english and physics is the only thing that is important to you as a parent there are other things now how are you going to achieve those other things planning plan i mean because you know what it is plan towards it and don't leave it to chance plan towards it and walk towards it and you will find that because you have a plan because you have a plan your plan becomes your framework it becomes the guideline that you're using and you put efforts towards this tiny efforts every day oh god parents you don't understand we always think is in the heavy or the bulk thing that we do it's in the small small things we do per term small bites small bites the results or the effect of small bites you cannot even you cannot imagine all right so when you're able to create your own education plan for your children right when you're able to create it, you find that that as the school is going on with its curriculum, you are going on with your own. And this is how you can build a wholesome child. This is how you end up having a wholesome child because there is no part of the child's education that is left unattended. Is it life skill you're attending to it? Is it habits you're training it, you're attending to it? Is it kingdom life? Is it their spiritual life you're attending to it? Is it whatever other thing you want to see? Is it leader? leadership skill you want to see so um, you want to see you are attending to it is it like you want your children to be lifelong learners and knowledgeable people you are attending to it is it like you want your children to pursue purpose find out what it is that they were placed in this world their interests and help them hone it you are attending to it how would you attend to these things it is by creating a plan that allows you to take care of each of them per time so on Monday, at this time, you know that, okay, you're going to do this with the child to address this aspect. On this day, you're doing this with the child to address this. So you will create a plan, first of all, by seeing the vision of what you want in your child, okay, and then creating a plan that will help you run with that vision. So you must create an academic plan for your child, okay? So what I do is, because I've done this over the years, I have templates. I have templates for each of these, I mean, this tools i'm telling you about i've talked about routines i've talked about um, routines i've talked about schedules okay morning routines evening routines i've talked about having a schedule now i'm talking about creating an education plan and all of that all these things you need to create some sort of a template and then put it in there so you can stick them somewhere you are seeing them your children are seeing them daddy knows them mommy knows them the children know them everybody knows them the people in the house supporting you know them when you're not there someone is able to step in and get whatever it is that needs to be done done do you understand i mean god forbid someone i mean one of you passes on today you have a vision that you have created together as a family so the other parents can run with it i know we don't like to hear this one we don't like to hear death but hey it is inevitable and i'm not saying any of us would die but what i'm saying is when we have plans that we have created together as a family we will find that even if one family member is not there there is a plan on ground and you will believe in the legacy or you will believe in what it is that your partner hoped that you can achieve with the children so you have a map or you have a roadway that you will continue with knowing that even if this person were to be around this is the same thing we would have been doing together basically then apart from that it helps your children become responsible be 
they become responsible because they know what it is that is your vision for them. They know your expectations and you didn't carve it on your own. You did it together as a family. They were there. They agreed with you. Sweetheart, have you seen this? Does it look like something that you would like for yourself? Yes, mommy, because we talked about it. We agreed on it together. So at every point that your child begins to derail, you are able to say to him, uh-huh, uh-huh, we have a plan. Not I have a plan. Not the plan that you have in your head. That you are at every point, you are knocking and beating your children up and down because you can see that they are not going towards the ultimate plan that you have for them because that plan is only in your head and you're the only one that knows it. So no, create one together as a family so you all know it and you're all working towards it. That way your child does not feel pressured. Your children do not feel pressured because they know this was agreed. This is agreed as a family. So even when they go away from you, okay, they go away from you. They are in Harvard. They are in Princeton. They are in Stanford or they are in uh, they are they are in uh, Lagos State University. They are in Nile. Wherever they are, they know what the vision is. They know where we are heading to. So whether they are with you or they are not with you, they know where they are heading to, and they will stay on track. Why? Because you have practiced this together. You have talked about this together. And then these things inform what it is that you pray about as a family. So even while you're praying, you don't have to sit down, right? And say to them every time, okay, let's look through. Those are our plans again. Number one, number two. No, even in your prayers, Father in heaven, we have decided as a family because of the grace that you have given to us. You are with us from the beginning when we made this plan. Okay, that's true. You know, then you talk, you pray about it. So consistently, this is in their face. When you affirm your children, you are affirming them based on this, right? You are affirming them based on this, you know? And so they have these things in their face every day. It is planted in their head. So whether they like it or not, they know where they are coming from and they know where they are going to. So yes, as part of your plan for the new school year, you will create, you should create an education plan for your children. So while the school is dealing with its curriculum, you are supporting them. And in that education plan, you will actually, you know, put into uh, cognizance, right? You actually put into, you put the school, what the school, what they're doing in school. You put, you create a place in your education plan where you support your children with their school work. So as I said, I have templates for all of these. I have all of these templates. I'm not sure how many templates I have, okay? But I have templates for everything I'm talking about today and i'm going to give out that template for a token you know I me mean? i like giving small tokens yeah i like i like i mean i like this small token just 1000 naira you will have all my templates so if you want the templates just put it there okay in the comments template and i'll tell you how to get that template by sunday you will have the template in your mailbox all right so great so basically you want to do that that's the third thing right i said structure now the fourth thing you want to do is you want to plan to be present this school year Plan to be present this school year. If you have been present in the lives of your children in school and all of that, then hey, this is for you. I am giving you, I mean, I am clapping for you because it is actually not easy. I work with parents and I've heard a lot of time parents will say, oh God, my work, I mean, work doesn't allow me. Sorry, one minute. I mean, can we get the charger of this? Let me charge it. It's a bit hot in here. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. All right, so. Parents who say, um, I really, it's not as if I don't want to be there, but I mean, I've got work to do. We need to pay bills. There's bills to be paid and all that. I mean, no disrespect. Bills need to be paid. Bills need to be paid. And we understand this. I mean, it's not even easy anywhere not to talk of in the present day Nigeria. So please go ahead and pay your bills. But you want to have some sort of a plan that does not make your child the casualty while you're trying to create, I mean, while you're trying to provide a life for him don't take the one that is important in the bid to pre create a, i mean provide a life for him we end up disconnecting with our children while we're providing the money for to pay school fees you're providing the money to pay private schools isn't it you're providing the money to pay landlord who has hustled and built a house while you're sabotaging your children while you're sabotaging your children you are i mean 
as I said before, no disrespect at all. These things need to be done, but we want to create a balance. So what we do is this, okay? At the beginning of the school year, we ask for the school timetable. I mean, sorry, the calendar. So we ask for the school calendar at the end of the school year. Good thing a lot of schools give that. So what do we do? We take that calendar and we, we take the calendar and daddy and I would, sorry. So we take the calendar and daddy and I will put it down and, you know, look at our schedules, right? So we tick off the time for me it's a lot easier now because i don't do a nine to five right now right but at a time where i worked and i worked in a school and in a school okay in a school i mean the last place i worked right in a school you need to be there as a teacher you need to be there like almost 100 percent of the time so educators don't take it i mean owners of school don't even find it funny when you keep coming to them and saying i need to be here i need to go there i need to go there why you're doing that what's going to happen to your children right that's the question they ask you so what do we do at the beginning of the school year we take the school calendar and we look at all the events that the children would have so we have the dates for those events so what do i do for me I structure, you see all those, uh, what do you call them? All those uh, leaves, right? All those uh, five day, what do they call them? I've not been at work for a bit. All those casual leaves, right? All the casual leaves, all that small, small thing here and there, right? I structure them. I bring my school calendar and bring his school calendar, right? So for the days that we have something that his school, I mean, there's a co um, some sort of a, our events collides basically you know where his school is having something my school is having something on the same day what happens automatically daddy knows that he has to show up on that day so daddy puts it somewhere in his schedule he puts it somewhere and he knows that on this day he has to show up for other days we look at it and all that he'll be, he'll be like okay i don't have meetings on this day and all of that and all of that so if we can we both show up but what i do is i spread all those leaves all those small small things i spread it on those days right and i go ahead and ask for permission so let's say my child is supposed to thank you see so let's say my child is supposed to have an event, you know, on the 21st of a month. I will put in my excuse for that day on the 11th. I would ask for permission to go somewhere or do something on the 11th. So on the 11th, I will tell you I am going to have to be away from work on the 11th. So my superiors, I said it to teachers all the time when they say, oh, I work and all that. I said, I have not missed an event at the children's school. I'm not joking. I have hardly ever missed an event except on that day, there is something that is happening in my school and it's happening on the, at the children's school on that same day. That's the only, at the same time, that's the only time that I will miss an event. But it hardly even have ever happened. It hardly did. You know so i always showed up and if i couldn't show up daddy will show up daddy probably will not show up 100 percent of the time but he shows up like 80 percent of the time why is this because we make plans way high i mean ahead because we make plans way ahead we are able to show up when we need to so you want to consider doing that look at your calendar and see how you can make plans to show up let me tell you how serious it was when i was pregnant for my second i shifted all my uh, uh my, uh, my visits my what do you call them antenatal visits i had all my antenatal visits in the evenings I had my antenatal visits in the evenings because I was very con I, mean, I was very connected with the children in my class that year. So even as a teacher, I, I couldn't see myself leaving them on a particular day every time. And because I had the opportunity to choose my antenatal time, morning or evening, I shifted all my appointments to the evening. So because I shifted all my appointments to the evening, I didn't even say that to the school. I didn't say to the school I was shifting my antenatal time. You know, if they just knew that I didn't go for antenatal a lot. And then the days that there was something in my children's school, I just said to you, I need to go today. 
I need to just go today. And so because I was always available, there was hardly, people hardly ever said no to me. That's the truth about it. And as I said, I will give you advance notice 10 days, 12 days, 15 days before. So how will you come and say no to me? So basically, so you want to consider things like that just so that you are present. Let me tell you what your presence does for your children. What your presence does for your children, it tells them that they are important. We say these things every time. My children are the most important thing to me. How are you showing? Are you just going to keep saying it? In fact, for some of us, we don't even say it to the kids. We don't even say to them, you know something, you're the most important thing that happened to us. You know something, you're the most important people in our lives. You come before everything else. We don't say these things to our children, first of all. Then we don't even act it. And we just assume that they know that they are the most important things in our lives. And we just, when we are in our circles and we are talking with our friends, then we say, ah, my children are number one. My children. It's mouth, lip service. That's what you're doing. You don't even know it. But no, for some of us, our work is. For some of us, our careers are. Because the things that are important to you, you will create time for. And it so happens that these children, family, that's supposed to be the most important thing, or we claim to be the most important thing to us, happens to be the one thing that we actually do not pay the most attention to. Happens to be the first thing that we will shift aside to make other things happen. If we had, uh, uh, if we had, you know, to choose between being somewhere and going for an event in our children's school, we will find that for many of us, the thing that will suffer is the children's school. We will just say, is it not children's school? So when you do this, you tell your children over and over again that they are that important, that you can leave everything for them. Apart from that, for those events, what you do, you give your children the moral support that they need. Just looking from that stage and seeing that their mama is there, you don't know what it does to the psyche. Or it, I mean, you just don't know what it does to, 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 to the confidence and your the psychology of your child. It is so much. I tell you this, if nothing else, my children are sure of one thing, that they, we will show up every time they have an event in school. I have gone for an event in my children's school where I was the only parent there because it wasn't even an event that the parents needed to be. It's not like they said parents shouldn't come, but it wasn't an event that the children, parents needed to be around for. In fact, what was it? What was it? What was it? He, it was a small drama, right, that they were doing at the assembly. So it wasn't, it was just one of those things for the kids, for, 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 just for the kids and all of that, you know. But he's been working on it and all of that, and he was doing the, he was narrating, you know, he was narrating the drama or something like that. <laughs> I was the only parent there, but hey, I was there. So my children know that we will show up. So what you do is when you show up every time, don't forget one day they will be 25 and 28 and they will need to show up for you. Will your children show up? Will your child leave that meeting and show up for you when you need him? Will your child buy, buy that ticket and show up when you need him? Will your sh child show up for your birthday? And not say, mm, it is just a birthday. Will, will your child leave that friend, leave that partner, leave that spouse for a day just to show up for you? It is actually dependent on you. How often did you show up for them? How often did you make them think that everything had to wait for you to show up for them? It is the same way that they would decide whether everything should stop and wait for them to show up for you. I say this a lot of times. A time will come in our lives as parents where all that will matter will be the words and the presence of our children. Not the presence. Not the fact that they pay the hospital bills. Not the fact that they stock your fridge with food. Not the fact that they pay your security men and pay for DSTV that would mean nothing to you at the time. But the fact that they come in every Friday. The fact that their children are all over your house every weekend. The fact that every of your birthday is still important, the way you made their birthdays important. The culture that you put in place in your home while they are growing. They will come back for those 
traditions. They will come back for that tradition. The habits that you nurture, they will come back with those habits to you. And a season will come in your life that this will be the only thing that matter. All right. So we want to do what we need to do. Remember, I am still talking about preparing for the academic school. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the fifth one and the last one that we're going to be talking about is you assume your role as a co-teacher in your parent children's life. You need to assume your role as a co-teacher in your par in your children's life. Yes, you have lesson teacher. Yes, you have all the people that support your children. It's good. But parents, you need to take your role. Being a teacher is one of the number one role that you have as a parent to your children. It is one of your number one roles. You need to teach your children. And when we say teach, 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 it's because the only thing we think our children need to learn is math, science, English, and all of that. That's the all. That's a problem where why when we say teach your children, you'll be like, ah, me, I can't teach my children. And we beat them and we kill them. That's not all the reason to teach your children. So if you have drawn an, an education plan for them, then who's going to teach them? You would need to teach them. So you will need to create that day. You will need to create that day or that's our, I mean, those hours, that day, just few minutes, even if it is two times in a week where you will sit down, your child will sit down and you will teach your child something. Your child needs to see you as a teacher. Your child needs to understand that learning happens everywhere. Your child needs to know that learning is not isolated or it's not exclusive to his classroom and to his school. So the reason your child tells you every time, my teacher did not say we should do it this way, is because your child does not see you as a teacher. It's because your child sees you as daddy or mommy and the person who has the right to teach him is the teacher in the classroom. But if you have a culture in your home where you sit and you teach your children, your children will not say to you, that's not what my teacher said. So, yes, we need to take on our responsibilities as co-teachers in our children's life and teach them. You need to do that. Okay. I have a book. It's a journal. Actually, I have a journal that will come out sometime in November. Okay. In that journal, what I have done is I have created a plan for 52. I mean, three, I mean, 54 weeks, right? I've created a plan for one whole year, right? That actually gives you a role something that you do with your children according to your time every day every two days every week but what i have done is i have forced you i have created an opportunity for you to sit down with your child and do something record it so that you can actually monitor your progress i am very big on structures templates structures Things that you can use because I know a lot of times when we come and we talk about the things that you need to do with your children or you need to do for your children because we don't show you how because we don't we don't give we don't simplify it for you. It is very difficult for you to go and start. So when we have templates, right, when we have templates or when we have um, something on ground that we can use to record and you monitor our progress that gives us an idea of what we should do. It makes it a lot easier. So that's what this journal is about. It's a planner and a journal. It's a one-year planner for you to support your child. I am the queen of supporting my children. That one, nobody can take it away from me. If you know me, you know I am at the forefront when it comes to supporting my children. And it has nothing to do with whether I'm working or not. Whether I'm working or I'm not working, I am supporting my children. All right, so I have created this so that you can actually support your children there will be a place for daddy where daddy comes in even if it's once a week you know we do this we bring these men in because a lot of times it's mothers that do everything so you bring your i mean this men in so when you already have all i mean when you have you know the structure on ground you're able to say to daddy you know something i would need you teach our son right i will need you to have a session with our son once in a month where you can talk to him about 
sex education where you can sex educate him or i need you to talk to him about this specific thing this is the plan for what the lesson so you give him a plan so i have a lesson some sort of a lesson plan so that you can write there he's going to have to talk i mean know about this this lgbt he's going to know about uh, um, erection he's going to know about this thing. so you have it right there for him so all daddy needs to do is look at that plan now uh, right all he needs to do is look at that lesson plan and see okay this and this and this and this and this is what you've even gone to put ideas there right you've even gone ahead to put ideas there for how he should go about it and you see the man will run with it even if you don't want to give him idea at least you just have the pointers of what and what and what you want him to talk about so when all these are in place you send it you don't even have to hand it to him like or take like you're sending him send an email to him or send him a, a, a message and he will look at it and probably laugh this woman and her wahala but hey it is there and then you assign the time it is some once in a month 20 minutes daddy just 20 minutes so a lot of times we say the men are difficult they won't want to be involved it's because we have not looked for the best ways to make them involved when we look for the best easy way that you know it's not as if you are compelling them or it's not as if you are i mean you are making trouble out of it you will find out that they will conform i'm saying this i told you that today i am talking from my experience i mean it's like that most of the time most of what i share is my experience most of what i share is not this is not a google matter okay this is not a google matter this is not a book matter this is my experience i'm sharing and this has worked okay i got into this emotional um intentional parenting journey way before my husband joined me you know so i had to i had to look for the best ways to get him in and all of that and this worked this worked so sweetie um kamsi has been you know he's been asking questions around this area i don't know i will prepare something for you okay i'll send it to you <laughs> madam and then he walks away Two days later, he gets something. I mean, he gets some my 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 plan, my lesson plan for that subject. He gets some sort of lesson plan. Nothing ambiguous, nothing cumbersome, just simple and all that. And he knows this, 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 and all that. And I'm like, ooh, the time that you guys go to run errands on Saturday, buying bread and all of that is a good time. So he's not sitting down and having a lecture. They are driving, and you know, something just comes up, and before you know it, he's had a conversation with your child concerning this area because sometimes they need a man your boy child needs a man to tell him certain things it's like me okay it's like my husband coming to sit down to tell my daughter about her menstrual circle and menstruation and all of that he won't sit in it won't be as practical right it won't be as practical as it will be or it won't be as authentic as it will be if i told her about these things so it's the same way as mothers we want to think that okay we'll do all the sexual you know instructions and education so our, we, um, with our sons without involving their father and we think that it will it will be that effective I think when daddy is involved in some little way it will be more effective that way than if we have to do it all by ourselves you may want to think about that all right so basically that so you assume I mean, you, you you create that you create that whole atmosphere where you allow yourself teach your children you allow yourself to teach your children and this has nothing to do with because i am a teacher or i have some teaching training i had my son for five whole years before i entered yeah i had my son my son was about four five before i entered the classroom for the first time as a teacher and we had done so much we had done so much <laughs> by that time so it has nothing with having an education background and all that it has to do with being intentional i have just started homeschooling my daughter and what i've realized is okay homeschooling is intentional parenting if you're an intentional parent you will you would you would swim into homeschooling and it won't be as i mean it won't it, it won't be as crazy as you think when you think at homeschooling ha my life is tied i don't know very far from me in fact my life is <laughs> anyway we're not talking homeschool here today so basically this is what we are talking about all right so thank you very much that's what it is about for today all right so i said that i have the back to school pack okay the, what we just discussed today is just a few of the things that i actually put together in that back to school pack 
okay and it is for free right it is for free so for those in the group all you need to do is just hit the invite invite button in the group you will see the invite button right there when you click on that invite button what it does is it will take you to the list of your friends it will take you to the list of your friends on facebook and all you need to do is invite as many of them as possible 500 every 50 of them to the group okay at least 50 of them to the group why am i saying this this is not just about having the numbers in the group this is about having more parents who are intentional if you want if you're watching from my timeline right now i we run a group it's called parenting through mentorship okay in this group we share we we talk about parenting basically okay we we have a vision okay and we believe that as parents that we are children's number one mentors so we visualize visualize the adults that we want to see in our children or the adults we want our children to become and we embody that adult and begin to live the life of that adult so our children can emulate firsthand from us and then we believe very strongly that every child has a purpose and we work towards helping our children identify and isolate that interest that they have that will help them reach their full potential will help them live the purpose for which god has created them so these are like the two strong things that we are about in that group so the more parents who come into the group the more parents will become intentional and when parents are intentional it means that we would have more wholesome children and if one two three five ten thousand of us are intentional and ten thousand or 15,000 of our children are. The truth is children who are who are nurtured right by intentional parents who are wholesome they are not children who are easily swayed they are not children who fall or break down or cringe right they're not children who cringe at the face of peer pressure they turn out to be the children who influence other children so if our children are like that so chances are children out there right children out there who do not know these things will be influenced by our children so you see how these are small efforts of inviting people here would actually have a ripple effect so that we have more children out there who are pushed out into the society who are human beings who are wholesome so with that our society will have less and less of the decay and all the mess that we have today so this is our big picture when we say to you invite parents here let them come and share in what we are sharing it still takes a village to train a child and we are your village we want to walk this journey with you because when we walk this journey with you you learn from us and we learn from you everyone has something your experience is enough for us to learn from so that's what it is so hit that button invite 50 people and i will send you this pack free for doing that as a thank you for doing that all right great so another thing is um the pack i said i have the templates i have all these templates okay so if you want that template all you need to do is pay 1000 naira just say okay just say in the comments I want the template i want the template and i'll tell you how you can pay for it and with the template of course you will get the pack for free i would let you know when the one year you know when the one year journal planner is available but i know that it will be more effective as a hard copy book so that's why i'm not putting it out there already i want you to have it i want it to be after your bible i want that to be the next thing because we're talking your children here so you have a plan to support your children for the whole year so every day you're imputing something there be deliberate towards supporting your children and that is the idea all right the last thing that we have is our pathway to no not the pathway the um, cultivating the reading culture in your child that course is going to begin on the 29th no on the 30th of this month is a one month course where we're going to create strategies we're going to create um 
challenges we're going to teach you strategies on how to that's your child that has refused to read because we know how huge reading is and how important that our children learn to read for pleasure okay we're going to take you through a one month program where you would work with your child to bring the child to the point where the child cultivates the habit of reading it's 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's one of our premium courses and this course is very close to my heart because i am big on reading my children are ardent readers my children love to read okay my children love to read and i know how much that does for us you can teach a child anything when the child loves to read okay my daughter is we just started homeschooling and she's excited she's super excited on Un unlike what we thought we thought okay she would be she would be sad because she's going to stop going to school but no way she's super excited okay because what i do i started with us reading books and because she loves to read books audio books hard copy books living i mean you know living books all of that were reading were reading and she was she's so excited about it and that's the way that's the first way that i used okay to um, program school from her head okay so basically reading is huge reading is very huge all right so that course is seven thousand five hundred naira. the first time we took that course we gave it out for about fifteen thousand but this time we're doing it for seven thousand five hundred is a whole month we'll be with you for a whole month right okay so it's seven thousand five hundred naira but if you pay from now to the 22nd that's a week from now okay you would pay just 5500 naira after that you pay 7500 and the cost begins on the third i think 29th or 30th but i'll let you know so if you want the course just say i'm interested in the course and we will give you the detail that you need to join that course so i have had a very very good time here it's 15 minutes past our time we have to go right now i hope that you have got value in this session today all right if you have any question if you put it there i would attend to read let me see if there are comments hello hello yeah oh i vow you were here hello bro okay i see a bimbala was here peace um, catherine nenla okay so thank you for all those becky thank you for joining us thank you for all those who made time to join us thank you i hope you got value i can't see any questions right i can't see any questions for me to answer this is supposed to be a q and a session so hi lami you are here lami so all right so thank you very much thank you jennifer for joining thank you for all those who joined us all right i hope we can put all of this i hope this is helpful all right so the back to school pack i mean the back to school tip for intentional parents is very available just invite 50 people to the group and send me a message i'll put my number there where you can send me the message all right you can i mean order for uh templates for you to create all the structures in your home and you get that back to school pack for free it is it, it, it is a um, what's it called it is packed you know it is packed you know it's a i took my time to do it and it's packed and all that all we have talked about today actually came in from there all right just a little part of what we have in there all right thank you very much and um do have a lovely lovely afternoon bye